Welcome to SecureM's webinar on the SafeLogic series. The SafeLogic is our entry-level SafeLock and has a number of features. We're going to cover those today in this webinar. Things we're going to cover in the webinar are a number of different topics. Who is SecureM Systems? SecureM is fairly new to the SafeLock industry, so we'll tell you a little bit about the company. Then we're also going to cover electronic lock design. We'll look at the existing products that are on the market and the types of design choices they've made in order to manage their electronic safe lock platform. Then we're going to take a look specifically at SecureM's lock mechanics. And then we're going to take a brief product overview of our uh, products that we have within our line. We have 150 different safe locks in three product lines. So we'll show you very briefly what those are all about. And then finally, we're going to dig into the topic of this webinar, the SafeLogic series, what this product is. We're going to talk to you about programming, and we're going to cover troubleshooting. What to do if something should happen, if you can't get in your safe, or if your safe lock is beeping, what are the things that you can do in order to recover? So first, a little bit about who SecureM Systems is. SecureM was founded in 2006 at the request of several large North American safe manufacturers. Our parent company was established in 1991, and they were experts in access control and biometric authentication. Because of our expertise in biometric authentication, a couple of large North American safe manufacturers found us, recognized our expertise in innovative um, technologies, and asked if we would be interested in entering the safe lock space here in North America. Up until that point, we'd made access control systems. We hadn't made safe locks. So, after looking at the market and realizing there were only two or three at the time large players, we decided there was an opportunity to enter this space with products that were reliable and innovative. As a result, we established SecureM Systems. Our head office is based in Southern California. We're an hour north of LA in the, uh, in near Ventura. Our warehouse is also here. What we've become known for in the last eight years is three things reliability, best cost of value ratio, and innovation. And those three things are very important in today's safe lock world. Reliability is key. We're putting these safe locks on a big steel box that's designed not to let you in. The only way to get in is to put in the correct code. Reliability has to be there. Best cost of value ratio. You'll find as you go along and learn about our product that we have a tremendous features packed into safe locks using technologies from uh, adjacent marketplaces. We're the only company really to do this at a very good cost. And then finally, innovation. Because we've taken other types of technologies and put them into or built them into our safe lock systems, we're able to provide the market with the types of technologies they're looking for, whether that's wireless communication, network connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, many different types of technologies and we'll show you that throughout this presentation. The first lock however we manufactured is, was, was called the SafeLogic Basic and that is this uh, entry pad here. It is a standard entry pad. You enter a six digit code, it sends signals to the locks, the lock decides if it's the correct code, if it is it opens. The first lock we developed was the swing bolt lock. This is the most popular lock in North America and that's the first one we started with. But as we got more involved with the uh, um, safe manufacturers, we recognized a need for other types of uh, locking mechanisms. So we introduced the deadbolt. This is a square bolt lock that um, uh, when you enter the code, the, uh, the, the motor pulls back the bolt in a mechanical retraction, and then of course you're able to open your safe. In other situations, we needed different types of locks that didn't um, where the safes didn't have bolt work. Perhaps these are, are on interior compartments of safes. So we developed the spring bolt. And that is exactly the same as the dead bolt. However, this is a non-dead latching bolt, allowing you to um, put it in applications where you don't have bolt work to hold this bolt back. And finally, we took a page from our access control days and introduced a product called the strike bolt. And this is a lock that is new to the safe lock industry, but it's very useful in interior compartment applications in a safe. The interior compartments don't often have bolt work, so there's no way to hold a, a standard bolt back when the lock is open. 
So what we've done is develop the strike bolt lock. Um, you mount this on the jam of the safe and then as you close the interior compartment you have a pin or a loop on the back of the interior compartment door and that engages with this area of the strike bolt and locks it in place. So a new product that fits a specific need within the safe lock community. These four different lock bodies are all interchangeable with any entry pad within our set. So this SafeLogic Basic can be connected to a swing bolt or a deadbolt or a spring bolt or a strike bolt. They're all interchangeable and that's one of the beauties of our systems. Now SecureM offers three different SafeLock product lines. The SafeLogic series and these are really designed for residential, gun safes, light commercial, banking applications where you aren't requiring a lot of features. We have three different models of these and I'll show you those. The ProLogic series is a uh, fully featured product that has a lot of different functions. These are designed for commercial and retail applications and banking applications. You'd find these in banks, you'd find them in uh, fast food stores, you'd find them in retail locations. Uh, anywhere that they need a sophisticated safe lock system. And we have eight different models of the ProLogic. And finally, because we are biometric authentication experts, we developed a full line of biometric fingerprint safe locks with, that has many of the same features and functions that we talked about with the ProLogic line. We have 10 different models of our ScanLogic. Now, each of these entry pads can be paired with any of our lock bodies. Again, those four lock bodies we showed you in the previous slide can be paired with any of these entry pads. What's interesting to note is the ProLogic and the ScanLogic can manage up to four locks. So if you have one fingerprint entry pad, you can connect four locks to it and manage multiple doors on a safe. What's interesting about our locks is they are convertible. So not only can you put them with different types of uh, entry pads for different functions, but the entry pad that it's connected to, once paired, downloads the functionality to the locks. So you take a standard lock, you input information, you connect it to our uh, entry pad, and that information is downloaded to uh, be able to prepare that lock to have quite advanced features. I'll show you that a little bit later. So here's the idea of convertibility within our product line. We manufacture this lock. This lock can go with any of our entry pads, whether it's a safe logic or a pro logic or a scan logic. When it's connected to a safe logic, it is operating in what we call analog mode. I'll tell you a little bit more, more about that later. But when it's connected, it only has two user codes. So this again is an entry level safe lock system, two user codes, a manager code and a user code. Then disconnect that lock from the safe logic and we connect it to a pro logic and go through a process to pair these two locks, this lock and this entry pad. Now you have advanced functionality, 30 user codes, time delay, dual control or single control, audit trail, time lock, and wireless connectivity, which allows you to have remote programming and live audit streaming. That's with the pro logic entry pad. Again, all of this information is downloaded to the lock body to prepare it to manage all of these different features. Then finally, we can connect a scan logic entry pad to that same lock. And now, as it pairs and downloads information, it can now um, handle 30 fingerprints, 30 user codes, time delay, dual control, audit trail, time lock, wireless, and many more functions. So it takes a standard lock and makes it a very high fun functioning advanced feature lock. Being new is not a bad thing. It gave us the opportunity to review the existing technologies, the existing safe locks that were in the marketplace, and then design in the good features and functions and design out the not-so-good features and functions. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, the existing technology, the existing safe locks that were in the marketplace when we decided to design our systems. And we'll show you the pieces that we liked and the pieces that we didn't like so much. And uh, rather than reinvent the wheel, we were able to borrow some of the technology in order to create a very reliable safe lock system. 
So let's take a look at the SecureM lock design and first we're going to look at um, other locks that are in the market and other types of technologies that are being used. So this is one type of technology. Imagine this uh, graphic as a simple, simplistic view of an electronic safe lock. Here's the bolt, this is the lock case, and then the blue box here is a actuator. In this case it's a solenoid actuator. What happens in this technology is you enter a code, the PCB board inside the lock determines is it is a valid code, and this solenoid drops down and allows this bolt to come back. And how that usually happens with this technology is as you get a correct code, the solenoid drops, allowing this bolt to be uh, retracted. And in this case, it's usually done with mechanical retraction, where you turn the keypad on the outside of the safe to mechanically retract the bolt with a spindle. As we looked at this design, um, there were a number of things that we noted about it. One, it's a bolt blocker design, so the idea with this is you are using the bolt to block the safe work, the, uh, the safe's bolt work, so that you can't open it. It stays in this locked condition. As soon as you enter a right code, of course, the bolt moves back into the case and it allows you to bypass the, uh, the lock bolt and open the safe. Typical application. It uses a solenoid actuator in order to uh, allow the bolt blocker to, uh, to be relieved. It uses mechanical retraction, which means the, uh, the user has to turn the keypad in order to uh, unlock the safe. And in this particular design, there were lots of parts and pieces. It was fairly complicated, very thin ribbon cables, uh, which became problematic over time. So we took away from this, it's a complicated process. We also took away that they had a lot of great features. So we looked at the features and we tried to emulate those in other products and add to them. Look at another uh, competitive product that's on the market. You probably know this product very well. This is a swing bolt design and it is, again, imagine this is a lock case. This is a blocking mechanism. When it's in this position, this bolt can't be turned back in in order to open. It uses a solenoid, again, where the solenoid pin prevents this, this slide bar from being able to move out of the way so it can go to its unlocked position. When it is unlocked, that solenoid drops down and this is now free to slide back and forth as you rotate, as you turn the handle, this rotates this cam or this block bolt back into the case and allows it to unlock. As we looked at this design, Something interesting was going on in the marketplace. Uh, VDS, which is a testing agency very similar to the UL testing agency here in the United States. VDS is the European standard, uh, out of Germany in particular. And VDS was very concerned about something called um, vibration attack or bounce attack on solenoids. The concern here is that you could um, attack a safe with vibration and get the solenoid to drop so that you can move to the unlocked position without entering any codes. This has happened over the years in a number of applications where we've seen safes that have been uh, dropped on their sides and that uh, force has allowed the solenoid to drop out and move to the unlocked position and the door flops open. So VDS actually decertified any locks that were solenoid based and that was a key component you may have seen on YouTube um, hotel safes. There's lots of videos if you want to YouTube it. But Google um, solenoids on uh, cheap safes. And you'll find that there are solenoids that are so weak, in fact, that you, you, you wrap on the top of the, uh, the safe and the door will pop open. This is the concern that VDS had. Now, the solenoids that are used in these types of locks are much better than those very inexpensive solenoids. But in any case, this can be accomplished by um, applying the right force and bypassing the logic within the, uh, the safe lock. So as VDS decertified the solenoid, we took that lesson away and said, we, we should not use solenoids in our safe locks. But what we did like about this design, it was very simple. The idea of this design is very few moving parts and a very uncomplicated design. Nice design. And then finally, we have another type of safe lock design. This one is, again, this is the uh, lock case. This is the lock bolt. This is the motor. As you enter a code in this particular design, there's a threaded shaft this threaded shaft engages with this plastic nut and as it engages it pulls that bolt back so it can open. 
There are a number of watchouts with this uh, particular design. As you enter a code, what happens is that motor starts spinning. The motor starts spinning and tries to engage with that plastic nut. As it does, it retracts the bolt. The bolt is retracted, so you have a, a good idea, which is motor retraction of the bolt. And then as it locks again after six seconds, it auto-relocks to the locked position. Nice design in some aspects, in others concerning. This has what I would call a disengaging drive mechanism. You see every time you open this lock, it has to go out and grab this plastic nut. If this bolt is at all out of position or misaligned, it will cross thread and the bolt won't be able to be uh, retracted and your safe will be locked shut. So this is a concern. The disengaging drivetrain uh, technology is not something we wanted to include in our safe locks, but the motor actuator was a very good idea. So we have included motors in all of our locks. So let's take a look at the SecureM design. This is a uh, picture of the inside of the swing bolt lock. You'll see here that you have a, a bolt that rotates back into the case. This is a mechanism that prevents the bolt from uh, rotating back in. And here we have a motor, and the motor slides up and slides down a blocking mechanism. If it gets a valid code, it drops this pin down and allows that slide bar to slide back so this lock can open. I'll show you how that works. Essentially what we've done is we've taken all the good stuff out of uh, the, uh, the locks that were on the market. We took the features out of one lock, the very high-end features. We took a simple design out of the uh, one particular lock. Fewer moving parts, the simpler the design, the more reliable. And then the motor actuator that we've used in this case was also a very good uh, option as far as an actuator. Uh, and based on the ruling by VDS, uh, a necessity in the safe lock industry. As we developed this simple design, we uh, achieved what we wanted to achieve, which was reliability. This safe lock is designed for well over 200,000 cycles. The UL requirement for a safe lock is to operate 10,000 cycles. We actually test every single lock 2,000 times before we ship it. The purpose in doing that is to ensure our reliability. So let's take a look at how our swing bolt design works. Again, we have a lock case, we have a slide bar that blocks, we have a motor with a blocking pin and a, a half moon shaped um, lock bolt that rotates back into the case when it's in its unlocked position. As you enter a code, the motor turns a mechanism that allows this blocking pin to retract. This slide bar is free to move, and now you can rotate your handle to rotate this blocking uh, bolt back into the, into the case, allowing you to open your safe. We're going to take a deep dive now on that mechanism. So here's our, our lock. Here's our blocking pin or bar. What we're doing is we're showing it in its locked position. Here's how the motor works. Here's the motor, and this is a shaft on the motor. When we enter the correct code, this shaft turns. The motor's only job is to turn that shaft. We have a cross tie in the shaft. The purpose of this cross tie is, allow, is to allow the uh, shaft to turn, and then we use this high tensile strength helix in order to rotate as the, the motor rotates, this mechanism rides up or rides down on the helix. We call this helix tracking. This is its locked position. If I were to enter a code and the circuit board would determine that it is correct code, it would start the motor turning. The motor would turn and this cross tie would turn, but the helix would allow this whole blocking bar to move to the unlocked position in the downward motion. See the, the cross tie here and the cross tie here? What we've done is simply use the motor to turn. As it turned, it dropped it down. Moves to its unlocked position and allows the bolt to be retracted. Now, it automatically relocks. So currently we're in the locked position. You see the cross tie here and the uh, helix is in the upper portion, bringing this whole chassis, this blocking bar, down. Six seconds after we open the lock, we automatically relock it. How we do that is we turn the motor in the opposite direction. 
As we turn the motor in the opposite direction, this blocking bar uses the helix tracking system to rise up and move to the blocked position. It's a simple process, but it allows you to achieve a very low energy consumption, very reliable system. We haven't got a threaded rod that's uh, trying to capture a plastic nut to pull that bolt back in. What we're doing is using very simple technology in order to achieve a very secure and reliable position. So let's take a look at it. We've got the motor here. This, area, and this arrow is pointing to the location where the blocking bar comes up. As I enter a code, the motor turns, the blocking bar goes down, allows me to rotate this. As uh, six seconds after the, uh, the safe has been opened, it automatically goes to its locked position. Signal is sent to the motor, the motor turns in the op opposite direction and rises the blocking bar so that it can no longer uh, be um, uh, opened. It moves to its locked position. There's a couple of interesting things about the inside of our lock. We have what we call two logic centers, here and here. The logic centers allow us to have two different brains inside this lock. What I mean by that is one logic center takes analog signals. Analog signals are basically voltage. As I press a number on an entry pad, it sends across a set of voltage uh, parameters that determines that that number was a number one. Then I press the number two on my entry pad. It sends across a, a voltage that matches the number two. And that's how the lock receives its information. But because we have an alternate logic center, a second logic center, we can actually turn this standard lock into a digital lock. And now we're sending across from the entry pad to the lock binary information, which means we can send it much faster. We can send it in, uh, we can have many more features about the, uh, the type of locking system that we've got and the features that it has. And it works in two different modes and it's convertible. What is this logic center all about? The logic center is really the brain inside the lock. And what it does is when it sees information coming across, it deciphers it. And it determines if it's a valid code or not a valid code. When we operate this lock in analog mode, we use it with the safe logic series entry pad. In this mode, this standard lock has two users and is a standard entry level safe lock. But if I were to activate the second logic center of the, uh, the, the module, then I could connect two different types of keypads. This is a ProLogic. You see it has an LCD screen here. It sends digital signals to that same lock, and it gives you advanced features. We're going to take a look at this product a little later. But essentially, you can have 30 users, audit trail, time lock, wireless connectivity, network connectivity. Think of this as a very high-functioning system. It does it because it's digital. Then we can also connect another digital entry pad. This is exactly the same as our ProLogic. It's called ScanLogic. And you can put your fingerprint on this platen, and it allows the information, the fingerprint authentication algorithms to take over and determines if it's a valid code. And that, the lock then in this mode, allows you fingerprint, 30 users, audit, time lock, wireless, and many more features. Now let's take a look at the deadbolt. The deadbolt is a uh, different type of lock that instead of having a, uh, a locking blocking bar that rotates in, this is a square bolt and it actually pulls the bolt back in and pushes it back out again in order to relock. But we do this in a much different way than uh, conventional safe lock manufacturers do. Let me show you a couple of components here. Here's the motor. This motor uh, is the key to making this mechanism work. The motor is attached to a gearbox that I'll show you here in a moment. Here's the circuit board with two logic centers, digital and analog. Uh, this is a, a dead latch mechanism. This is a, uh, a square bolt which is dead locking. So this dead latch prevents this bolt from being able to be pushed back in. And that's a common way to ensure that this is a dead locking lock. And here we have an internal relocker. But let me peel away the circuit board so you can see what's underneath it. As I remove the circuit board, you now see that we have this gearbox and a shaft. The shaft engages with the bolt, not in the way that you would expect it to. So I'll show you that in a second. Here's the motor, and here's the dead latch mechanism. Now as I get a look on this, you'll see this is the gearbox. Here's the motor. 
This is the shaft that engages with the uh, square bolt. You'll see here that uh, this is grease uh, to lubricate this action. But essentially what happens is as the motor receives the correct code information, this motor turns. It turns a gearbox which turns this shaft. And here's how it works. We again use this idea of helix tracking or helix compression in this case in order to move the bolt. So instead of using a plastic nut and a threaded shaft, which has, is problematic, we have a motor and a gearbox. The motor turns this shaft. Inside the bolt, we have a helix, high tension spring, steel. And what we do is we have the cross tie again. So in this case, what happens is when you enter the code and it determines it is a valid code, the motor turns, which turns the gearbox, which compresses the helix. As the helix is compressed, it wants to go to its natural resting state and back. When we lock it, we do exactly the same thing. Helix, as we compress that, it wants to go to its natural resting state and pushes the bolt out. A very simple solution to a age-old problem when it comes to electronic safe locks and mechanical bolt retraction. This is an auto relocking system and as a result it is very reliable. Alright, so that shows you uh, the two different technologies we use within our lock mechanisms. All of our lock bolts, as we said before, are uh, motor drive locks. Now let's take a look at a very brief product overview so you can get an idea how you can use these. We have three different models of the SafeLogic series. The first one that we've seen already is what we call our SafeLogic Basic. And the SafeLogic Basic is an analog system. It's a stainless steel entry pad. All of our entry pads are stainless steel, not zinc alloys, not molded uh, composite metals. These are stainless steel. We also have the next version that you see here, which is what's called SafeLogic Toplet. And the reason we call it top lit are there are two LED lights at the top of this ring that when pressed, any number is pressed, the light turns on so you can see to enter your code in the dark. This is a request that has come to me for many, many years in this industry. Um, and the other companies weren't really interested in developing this type of a, uh, a convenience application for your safe. So we introduced this back in 2007 and it was uh, listening to customers what they need and developing a simple solution. This solution allows you to op open your safe in the dark without turning a light on. Now, in addition to that, this particular um, entry pad is the one of our only plastic or polycarbonate rings. Everyone else is stainless steel. But we did this for a specific reason. This ring, which you see as chrome, um, could also be changed. We have three different colors, chrome, brass, and black chrome. And these rings can be changed on this particular design. The top light remains and we can change the color from chrome to brass or black chrome very easily. We can also gain access to the battery box which is located here without removing this entry pad from the safe. Then we move to our backlit entry pad and this is exactly the same as our basic. However, now you see the light bulb here. The light bulb allows us to um, turn on an internal light inside the keypad. So what happens is when you press this button or you press any number, it will illuminate and now you can see to enter your code in the dark. Similar, exactly the same type of technology. We, instead though, we've internalized the light here so it's backlit like your phone instead of having two LED lights. Now, the programming on the SafeLogic series is exactly the same as a programming format that you're very familiar with. It's exactly like the Lagarde Basic, but we'll go through the entire programming for this lock as well. In 2014, we introduced a technology to the uh, safe lock industry, an innovation that has been asked for for as long as I've been in the industry, which is 10 years. It's the idea that you uh, have a, the convenience of a push button lock, so you can open this lock with a code, but also you have the reliability to be able to open your lock using a spin dial access so that you can dial a combination to open in extreme situations. Let's say you don't have your battery's dead, you don't have another battery, you've got to be able to get into your safe, you can simply dial that combination in order to open the safe like a mechanical dial. This is what we call a redundant safe lock. It gives you two options to get in. If one fails, the other will work. And that way you are assured access into your safe. 
So this is really two locks in one. It's in one footprint. The lock is exactly the same size as our other locks as far as the footprint. Um, it has two modes, push button access. So what you're seeing in, in this entry pad, you can enter your numbers on the face of this keypad. It'll send through the correct information just like our regular safe locks and the lock will open. It has penalty time, so if you enter four and correct codes, it'll go into penalty time. The membrane system that we're using here is actually not a membrane, it's called a touchpad. And it's um, a resistive technology, so instead of having a membrane that you push down on, this is a more robust um, entry pad system that allows us to have resistive technology. So what happens here is you place your finger on the number one and a one is registered and it sends it digi digitally across to the, uh, the safe lock system. Two, three, and so on. We've also made this backlit so that you can see to enter your code in the dark. To turn the backlight on, you either press the button down here, there's usually a light bulb here, or you can put your palm of your hand over the entire safe lock face and it'll turn the light on for you. Now, let's assume you don't have batteries or something's happened that you can't enter your code. It's not accepting your code. You can pull up on what we call the spin dial release at the top of the, uh, the safe lock. And when you do that, you um, make visible a dialing matrix. Just the same as you would see on a standard spin dial, three-wheel mechanical lock. You dial it in exactly the same way. There's a dialing index here and a change index here. In order to dial the combination, you dial in that familiar sequence. Four times left to your number, let's say it's 50. Three times right to the number, say it's 25. Two times to 50, and then to the right to open the, uh, the safe lock. So exactly the same type of dialing sequence that we used previously with the old three-wheel mechanical lock. We've also added another convenience item. At the top of this spin dial release, there's a small LED light that shines down on this area so that you can see to dial this combination in the dark. Another innovative product from SecureM Systems. Again, we believe that there's an opportunity for innovation in this space by listening to customers. We also added another unique technology. We added Bluetooth technology to this entry pad. So, using your smartphone with an app that we provide free. The app is called SecureM Access and can be found on the Google Play Store for Android phones and it's coming available on the uh, iPhone App Store for iPhone technology. But Bluetooth is local connectivity so that means you can connect to our lock within about 60 to 100 feet and you can open the lock from your phone. It also keeps an audit trail of openings and it also provides you uh, the ability to, to um, uh, retract the bolt for specific periods of time. So if you wanted it more than the standard six seconds, you could spe specify that when you open the lock. But it allows you from your couch to open your gun safe that's maybe in the garage. Now, we'll take a look now at the ProLogic series. And the ProLogic series is uh, unique in that it has an LCD screen on the entry pad. That's how you can tell a ProLogic. We have eight different models to choose from, from the ProLogic L01 to the ProLogic L69. The higher the number, the more features. But here's the features that are available. 30 users, dual control or single control, depending on how you want to set up your security protocols. Time delay. Time delay is meant as a burglary deterrent, so if you enter a valid code, it'll count up a prescribed number of minutes and then allow you access to the safe when you enter your code again. This is meant as a burglary deterrent, so you often see a sticker or a notice in the front of a retail location saying, this safe equipped with time delay. The whole purpose of that is to announce to the potential burglar that the safe cannot be opened instantaneously, so go rob somewhere else. This lock also has audit trail capability. Again, because we have digital communication, we can keep track of clock time, we can keep track of activity, keep track of users, and we have a full audit trail available in this system. We have time lock functionality, meaning that you can lock out periods of time throughout the day, on any day of the week, repeating if necessary, or uh, scheduling holidays where no one, even a valid code holder, can gain, gain access to the safe. This function is often used in banking. And of course we added Bluetooth connectivity so that you can open this with a smartphone app, 
from wherever you happen to be in the local connectivity range 60 to 100 feet. We have also built in wireless connectivity. Wireless connectivity allows us to communicate across networks. So inside certain models of the ProLogic, we have a built-in receiver transmitter that transmits wireless information to and from the safe lock. This allows us to now have remote programming and network connectivity. When I say remote programming, this means, imagine this is at a uh, subway store location and you have a thousand different locations. Now if you um, uh, eliminate one manager at a store, you can delete their code from head office and add the new code for the new manager who's going to be starting today. You also have the ability to have live audit streaming. So what that allows you to do is, again, wirelessly to your network within your store, all information is communicated. So if I open the safe today at store number one, it will immediately send that information back to the dispatch head office software, and I will have a full record of everything that's taken place live. No one else offers this type of technology within the safe lock industry. The ProLogic series also can control up to four locks. One entry pad can control four locks. So if you have an outer door and multiple inner doors, you can control that with a single entry pad. And as you enter your code in a multiple lock setup, it'll say this is a valid code, which door would you like to open? And it'll open that door for you. You can specify who can open which doors, it, they can either open all of them or individually. You can specify that within the software setup. All right, now we're going to take a look at the scan logic series. And we have 10 different models to choose from here. These are all fingerprint authentication. This one uses swipe technology. It's active capacitive technology, and it allows you to swipe your finger across this sensor, and it'll authenticate your fingerprint. You've sometimes seen this type of swipe technology used on laptops, for instance. The two other models have what we call optical centers. There's a glass platen here and here. You place your finger on it. It reads your finger digitally, takes a digital image of your fingerprint and registers it. And then each time you present your finger thereafter, it looks at its database, determines that that is your finger, and allows you to open the safe. This safe lock series, the scan logic series, has the same functionality that we saw in the pro logic series. 30 fingerprints and 30 codes. You can open this either with a fingerprint or with a code, or you can set it up in security level 2, which allows you to open it with fingerprint and code each time. Again, that's a requirement for UL, so that uh, UL says that if you're going to have a fingerprint lock, you have to open it in fingerprint and code mode, so we met that requirement for UL. It also has dual control or single control. I can put one finger on and then a uh, manager can put his finger on and that'll gain access to the safe. Um, I can have it set up in fingerprint and code mode. So I put my fingerprint and my code in, he puts his fingerprint and code in, and the safe opens. So it really depends on the level of security you want. It has time delay functionality. Audit trail, so you know who's getting in. Time lock, wireless connectivity, remote programming, and network connectivity. This lock also controls up to four lock bodies. So again, if you've got multiple uh, doors on a safe, you can control up to four locks with this particular lock. All right, now we're going to get into the Safe Logic series. We're going to talk about programming, we're going to talk about uh, troubleshooting, and um, that'll take us through the end of the, the webinar. The Safe Logic entry level safe lock. You've seen this entry pad before. It does not have an LCD screen, it just has numbers. This safe lock, when connected to our lock body, has two user codes. A manager code, the default code is 111111, so that's six ones. You enter those numbers, you don't press number sign, ours doesn't require this enter button. Enter the six numbers, the lock will open for you. The second code that comes by default is a user code, and its default is 123456. Those are the two codes that each lock leaves the factory with. With this particular lock, the SafeLogic Basic, if you enter four incorrect codes, the lock by design will go into penalty time, and it'll prevent anyone from opening the safe for a five-minute period. Again, this is another requirement of UL and VDS, and it ensures that no one is standing at your safe trying to guess your code. Um, with our system, 
If you enter four incorrect codes, it'll go into a five-minute penalty. Um, it will, if you enter, if you wait out the five-minute penalty, it'll beep at you every five seconds during five minutes, which tells you it's in penalty time. And then it'll stop beeping, and you can enter a valid code. If you enter two more incorrect codes after that, it'll go into penalty time again until it receives a valid code. The Safe Logic Basic is powered by a single 9 volt battery. On a 9 volt battery, this lock will open between 10 and 20,000 times. Generally, I've seen them in the 15 to 17,000 range when I cycle test a battery till it's completely depleted. How do you change a battery on a Safe Logic Basic? The SafeLogic Basic is, uh, has a battery compartment in the back of the entry pad. So here's a picture that shows the battery compartment. Uh, here's a finger pull to be able to pull that battery out easily, and it's connected with the two terminal blocks here. In order to change this battery, you push up from the 6 o'clock position on the entry pad, and you can then turn the, the keypad over, and you'll see the battery box, and you can simply change that battery. All codes are stored in non-volatile memory. So it doesn't need the battery in order to retain your codes. Even if your battery is dead for many years, just put in a new battery, your codes will still remain uh, intact inside the lock. So that's one way to change the battery. We also developed another, a, a simple innovation that's been asked for in this industry for years, and that's a convenient way to change the battery without either pulling off the keypad, removing it, or crushing wires as you put it back on again. So what we ended up developing is a small battery box which we call the Sherlock battery compartment. We call it Sherlock because it has a lever lock here that, that pivots out a cam to be able to lock this battery in place. Battery compartments on uh, competitive safe locks have been used for a number of years. However, you generally see them with either black electrical tape holding them in or in some cases a little yellow tag hanging off them to try to pull it out. The yellow tag is there really just to tell them where the battery box is, but people leave it on in order to gain access to pull it out. Otherwise, you need a screwdriver to pull it out. So what we did is we said, let's fix an age-old problem with battery compartments. Let's lock it in place. Let's provide a lever here that not only locks it, but acts as a handle to pull the battery compartment out. And we also made the battery compartment so you can only put the battery in one way. You can only put the battery box in one way because it is curved. That's called our Sherlock battery compartment system. Now, the SafeLogic Basic or the SafeLogic Series, top lit or back lit, can be used with any one of our four lock bodies. A swing bolt, a dead bolt, a spring bolt, or the strike bolt. Choose your lock body based on the bolt work configuration of your safe. Choose the entry pad based on the features that you want. In this case, we have a two-user lock, the SafeLogic Series. Now, we took a look at the SafeLogic Basic. This, all of this applies to the SafeLogic Toplet as well. It's exactly the same, just has two LED lights. It also applies to the backlit that also has an internal light. Again, you can connect it to any four of these locks. You, can, uh, you have the default codes and everything else is the same. All right, now we're going to talk about programming the SafeLogic series. And you'll know that I uh, had shown you our uh, redundant safe lock called the SafeLogic Extreme previously. The SafeLogic Extreme is essentially a SafeLogic Basic coupled with a three-wheel mechanical lock. If you're familiar with three-wheel mechanical locks, Lagarde makes one, s and makes one, the 6730, it's that type of locking mechanism. Three wheels, turned by a spindle as you turn the dial, or in our case, the, um, the entry pad. So everything I'm going to tell you about programming the safe logic also applies to the safe logic extreme. All right, so we know that the safe logic comes with two codes, uh, the manager code, which is 111111, and the user code, which is 123456. We're going to go about changing one of those codes. This change code process applies to changing the manager code or the user code. You do exactly the same thing. We're going to change the user code. So to get the, the uh, system into program mode, you enter six zeros. Zero, 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 it'll go beep. You enter the existing code. The existing code from the factory is one, two, three, four, five, six. But you would enter whatever your current code is. Then you would enter the new code. In this case, I'll enter 654321. It'll beep. 
Then I'll repeat 654321 and it'll beep again. The new code is set. Now you can open the lock using your new code, which in this case is 654321. If you get three beeps after this process, it means that your code was not set successfully. And the three beeps sound like an error. It doesn't make its normal beep. It goes beep, beep, beep. You know it's an error. And all you do is just repeat the process until you don't get the three beeps. It probably means that the two numbers that you entered weren't identical. So enter that, do that process again, and it'll change your code for you. Now, we can, because we have a manager code and a user code, we can disable the user code if we choose to. And this is temporarily disabling it. Um, you can disable and then enable. Let's imagine you have this subway store and you have a number of employees. You've given one employee, your assistant manager, access to the safe to get change out of the safe. But you've just made a large deposit into the safe and you don't want anybody accessing the safe. You're going to go out for lunch. So what you could do is you could enter your code, the manager code, hold down the last number of the manager code. In our case, it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And on the last one, hold it. Hold it down. It'll go beep, beep. And then after about three to five seconds, it'll go beep, beep again. Wait for that second set of two beeps. Now press the number two. It'll go beep and then beep again, and the user code is now disabled. So it's not deleted, it's not erased, it is simply disabled. You can go to lunch and know that no one can get in your safe. Now, you can enable the user code when you come back from lunch by doing the same process, but this time pressing 1. So you enter your manager code, hold the last digit of your manager code, it'll beep twice, then you enter 1, and that turns that code back on so that now your store employee can use that code. We can, however, delete the user code. So perhaps you fired this uh, particular uh, store employee and you don't know what their code is. You could just wipe it out of its memory. And how you do that is the same process, except you press 3. So you enter your manager code, hold down the last, wait for the second set of two beeps, press the number 3, and that code is now deleted. Now, if you've deleted a code, you can create a new code for the new employee that you hire. How you do that is enter your manager code, hold down the last digit, wait for the second set of double beeps, press the 1 button to create a new code, enter whatever code you want. It has to be six digits. I've shown it here as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but it could be anything. And then repeat that same code again. You'll get a confirmation beep, and the code will be set. If you get three beeps at the end of this process, it means that there was an error, and you can just go back through the, the, uh, the process and do it again. All right, so that's programming. It's a very simple lock, um, but it gives you some functionality to put in a typical uh, light commercial, residential, gun safe, banking, uh, teller locker type of situation. Now, we've shown it here with a swing bolt, but um, you can attach any lock you want. Now what I'm going to show you is something called the mechanical reset procedure, and it is used to set the lock back to factory default settings. Assume you know no codes inside this lock. You just want to get it back to its original state. You can do this procedure with a fancy piece of equipment called a paper clip. On the paper clip, you want to use this as a poking tool, so just bend this open so that you can have a, a straight poking tool. On the back of the lock, and this is on all of our locks, you'll find a small hole Generally, it's covered by a QC sticker, but the QC sticker may have been removed previously. So directly above the hole, you'll see the word embossed into the case that says reset. What you want to do is first disconnect the entry pad from the lock body. Make sure the, the battery is also disconnected from the entry pad. And now what you're going to do is press down on the... Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Step one is disconnect the lock, disconnect the entry pad, disconnect the battery. Is Find the reset hole, remove the sticker, and then take your poking tool, your paper clip, and press down on the button that's inside that hole three times. When you press down on it, you'll feel it pop down and then pop back up again. Do that three times. All that's doing is taking the, uh, any latent energy that's inside the locks capacitors out so that you can start from fresh. Now, the next part requires three hands or maybe a, a helper or if you're very ambidextrous, you can do it. 
But here's how it works. You're going to depress the reset button with that paper clip and you're going to hold it in its down position, depressed position. While you're holding it down, you're going to do two things. You're going to connect the lock cable to the lock and you're going to continue to hold this down and connect the battery to the terminal. When you do this, you'll continue to hold it down until you hear the lock go beep, beep, beep. It'll continue to beep like that until you release the paperclip. Release the paperclip and now your lock has been reset back to factory default. Manager code will be six ones. The user code will be one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now we're going to take a look at troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is um, procedures to use if you run into situations with your lock that's not allowing you access. So there's kind of four rules of troubleshooting. One is uh, make sure you've got power. This is a battery operated system. One thing I should mention is these can also be AC operated systems. Every single one of our safe locks can be connected to AC power. If you want, you can do that and use battery as backup. But make sure that you've got good power. If it's a battery system, make sure you've got 9 volt batteries and it's new, it's connected to the, uh, the keypad, and you have good connection. The second thing is to check the lock cable. Inspect it to make sure that it hasn't been crimped or broken or uh, damaged in any way. If that's okay, then reseat the cable in the back of the entry pad. Our lock cable is uh, removable from both the entry pad side and from the lock side. Some manufacturers solder their lock cable onto the lock circuit board. The problem with that is if you nick the cable, which happens often, with their lock, you have to throw the lock away. You have a very expensive paperweight. With our lock, you simply detach the lock cable from the lock body and from the entry pad, and you put a new cable on it. They're very inexpensive. So what you want to do is reseat the cable. I'm going to show you that in a picture here in the next couple of slides. And then the third thing is let's make sure the entry pad is functioning. Every time you press a number on the entry pad, you should get a light flash, and the light is at the very top 12 o'clock position, and you should hear the beeper sound. Finally, check for side bolt pressure. Side bolt pressure is where the bolt work handle is pushed hard against the bolt so that it's preventing it from retracting or operating. Our systems are fairly resistant to side bolt pressure because the, the motor action is completely independent of the bolt. So ours work well under side pressure, but some don't. Uh, some products uh, on the marketplace don't work well under side pressure. So in our case, you're going to get the motor to fire. All you'll have to do is jiggle the handle in order to allow the, uh, the bolt work to become um, unpressurized, and then uh, it'll allow the, uh, the, the lock bolt to open. Let's take a look at s typical symptoms you might see. If you enter your code and the lock beeps three times, but the lock won't open, the probable cause here is an incorrect code. Do you remember when we heard three beeps? It was beep, beep, beep. That's an error code. It means that the code is wrong, or it means that the, the lock didn't recognize the code and returned it as a wrong value. Troubleshooting procedure. Step one, find out if the code was changed, and if so, what, what was it changed to? Because sometimes what happens is people forget their code. They changed it, they forgot they changed it. It gives you the three beeps because it's not seeing the correct code. The other part of this troubleshooting procedure is each lock comes with two codes, a manager code and a user code. Generally, safe manufacturers keep the manager code in a logbook tied to the serial number of the safe. You can call the safe manufacturer, give them the safe serial number, and they will give you the manager code. Sometimes this custom comes at a cost, depending on who you're calling. But uh, the manager code will allow you to have a, another code that you know is right. It'll allow you to open it, and you can uh, gain access to the safe. So you would enter the manager code to unlock the lock. And then, since you don't know the user code, you could go through the delete code process that we showed you earlier entering the three so that it deletes that code, and then use the create user code um, process we showed you earlier to be able to um, recreate the code that is currently unknown. All right, the second one is what happens if, if it beeps twice, but the lock won't open? Two beeps, beep beep, is the communication that says that this is the correct code. So in this case, we have a probable communication error. It is likely a damaged cable, 
likely a uh, cable that's not reseated properly and not communicating information correctly. Here's what you do. Verify that the power is adequate. Install a new energizer or Duracell battery, but frankly, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you've got a new alkaline battery, brand name, you should be good. Um, ensure that the lock cable is firmly seated in the entry pad cable receiver. On the back of the entry pad, this is a picture of the close-up of the back of the entry pad. Here's where the lock cable connects to the entry pad. It's kind of like an old um, RJ11 jack or a telephone jack. has a little keeper on this side that locks it in place. Press down on that, and it's a little tight to get your fingers in there. Press down on that, and then pull that out. Inside that receiver should be four straight steel pins. They should be standing upright. If they are, then when you put that um, uh, cable back into this receiver, those four pins are going to mate with the wires, and you'll have communication. If the pins are bent over, gently try to stand them back up again. It means that someone's crushed them when they've tried to put this cable in or this uh, receiver, uh, this plug into the receiver. So try to stand them back off again, hope you don't break them off, and then reseat that cable. When you push the cable down into that receiver, make sure it's seated properly. It uh, should go in all the way and stop and then lock in place. Then re-enter the last known code. If the lock still does not open, don't drill. Rarely do you have to drill open a safe with a secure M safe lock on it. Remember we talked about the 2000 cycle test? These locks work. They're very robust. Rarely do you have to drill. Here's what you do. Replace the entry pad with a, a new entry pad. Re-enter the code. 99% of the time this corrects the issue and gets you in. All right. What if you enter your code and it beeps once every five seconds continually and the lock won't open? The lock's in penalty time. Four or more incorrect codes have been entered. The lock will continue to beep every five seconds for five minutes. What you do to prevent this or to overcome this is you wait through penalty time. You can't do anything while it's beeping. It'll beep for five minutes. When the beeping stops, enter the known code. Remember that you have to enter a valid code after penalty time expires. Uh, otherwise, you only have two attempts to enter a, another code. If it sees two invalid codes again, before it sees a, a valid code, it'll go into penalty time again. Now, our locks are different than some others you've seen on the market. Um, some of them have penalty times up to 15 minutes. Some have 10. Um, and some of them have an annoying feature where if anyone touches the entry pad or pushes any button on the entry pad during its 15-minute cycle, for instance, it will start over again and count another 15 minutes. Our lock doesn't do that. It counts through five seconds or th five minutes, beeps once every five seconds. After it's finished, it's done. Don't take the battery out because if it hasn't got battery power, it can't continue its, its uh, countdown. So leave the battery in, let it beep away for five minutes, and then enter your known code. Again, pushing buttons on hours does nothing. It doesn't restart penalty time. It um, doesn't, the keypad's actually dead while it's in penalty time. All right, so we got two beeps. We enter a code, we get two beeps. You can hear the motor sound, but the lock won't open. What's going on? The probable cause is two beeps indicates that it is the correct code. It's likely a mechanical problem. What to do? So the troubleshooting steps are verify the response from the entry pad is two beeps. Let's make sure that it is saying this is the correct code. Verify that the motor is running. Ours has a distinctive motor sound. You can hear it run, whether it's a deadbolt or a spring bolt or a swing bolt. You can hear it. Strike bolt's a little harder because it's only um, a very small sound, a very low volume sound. But if you can hear the motor run, you know the lock's doing what it's supposed to do. So step three is really the only other recourse, which is to relieve bolt pressure. Place the handle of the safe in the right hand position, the left hand position, the neutral position, re-enter the codes, Hopefully you can uh, eliminate the bolt pressure that's causing the lock not to fire. Ours, however, doesn't often, this doesn't often happen because ours uh, resists side bolt pressure very well. If the lock still doesn't open, do not drill. The lock's working correctly. The remedy is to call the safe manufacturer to determine the method to adjust the bolt work or overcome bolt failure. Bolt work failure. The lock's working. Um, they may have you drill but you'd be drilling for a different thing other than drilling to open the lock. All right, you've entered eight, your uh, code. Uh, it beeps eight times and the lock won't open. The cause is low battery warning. The battery is below 4 point, or 5.4 volts. 
and it hasn't got enough power to open the lock, it gives you this warning many times before it actually reaches this level. So if it beeps eight times and it won't open, it's reached a point of depletion where it just doesn't have enough power to turn the motor. Re remedy, change battery. Change it with a name brand battery, Duracell or Energize, fine. Um, we use Lowe's batteries a lot. Uh, any type of uh, alkaline battery that is fully charged and enter your code again. No beeps, no lights when you enter your code and it's completely dead. The first cause, there's a couple of potential causes here, but I would suggest the first one is it's got a dead battery. It's so dead that it's not beeping, it's no lights, nothing. Second thing is it could be the battery connection has been uh, damaged, so check that. But the answer to this is check the, uh, the battery cables, change the batteries, enter your code again, and you should be good to go. Here's another one. No beeps, no lights, completely dead right out of the box. This happens from time to time. And what it is is the lock body itself is in digital mode. If the lock body is preset in digital mode, you will get the symptoms of a completely dead safe lock when you connect it to a safe logic basic or backlit or toplet. So here's what you do. The uh, remedy to this is to reset the lock using the reset method. This will convert the lock to analog mode, the mode that it should be with the, uh, the safe logic system, and it'll reset the codes to the manager code of six ones and the user code of one through six. It's not broken, it's just in the wrong mode, so the keypad can't recognize uh, the, the lock. Do the reset and you'll be back in business. All right, warranty. <clears throat> We're almost done. Uh, warranty, I wanted to tell you about our warranty. Generally in the industry, safe locks are warranted for 12 months from the date of manufacture. Our warranty is 18 months from the date of manufacture. So we do better than the standard warranty because we really believe in the reliability of our product. However, data manufacture helps nobody but the manufacturer. Um, and this has been a, an issue for many years in the safe lock industry. The reason they put the data manufacturer is that reduces their liability to um, cover product under warranty. If I make it today and I sell it to a distributor who puts it on his shelf for, let's say, nine months, he, f he finally sells it. You put it in your truck for another three months, four months. You put it on your customer's safe and your customer no longer has a warranty. We changed that this year. In January of 2014, we introduced a 12-month date of service warranty. And what that means is no matter how long it sits on your distributor shelf or your shelf, the moment you put it on the safe for the customer, it becomes eligible for a date of service warranty of 12 months. In order to start this, we need to know the date of service warranty. So we do that in a couple of ways. We provide in the package a warranty form. They can take the serial number, the blue serial number plate off the back or sticker off the back of the lock and the back of the entry pad, apply it to that form, mail it in with proof of purchase telling us when you put this in service. Um, <clears throat> once you've done that, you, uh, you can either do it that way by mail or you can go to our website and register uh, online by clicking the register your warranty um, button that you see on the right hand side there. You'll find it under warranty on our website. So no matter how long the product sits on your shelf or your customer's shelf or whoever, it is uh, under warranty for 12 months from date of service. We're the only people to do this. Um, it's creating a bit of a stir in the industry, but we think it's the right thing to do. All right, so how do you determine the data manufacturer? On the back of every entry pad, on the back of every lock, we have two things. We have this square. You'll see a close-up of it here. It's a white label that has got a very aggressive um, uh, adhesive. It's designed not to be removed. In fact, if this seal is broken, your warranty is void. There's a screw underneath this that allows you to remove the entry pad or on a lock, remove the lock case. We don't want you at the circuit board of the locks or the entry pads, so we provide this tamper evident seal. On the seal, we have um, a number of rows of numbers. The top row is year. The middle row is months and the final three rows are days of the month. We black out the corresponding date of manufacture. So this one was made in 2012 on the sixth month on the 30th day. So it was made June 30th, 2012. 
You can also find this warranty seal on the lock body, has the same thing. And the lock body as well uh, is put in a place so that you uh, void the warranty if you break that seal. So please don't uh, break the seal, don't void your warranty. The other place that you can find the data manufacturer is every entry pad and every lock is uh, barcoded and has a human readable code underneath it. The center portion of the human readable code gives you the year 12, 06, month, 30th day. That's the date of manufacture. These other numbers tell us other things, where you bought it, what style of lock it is, and so on. But that middle set of numbers, will, uh, beginning with the year, will tell you the date of manufacture. All right. Performance is so key in this industry. Um, electronic locks for many years have uh, gotten a bad rap, I would say, because uh, in the beginning they were very bad. They were very high failure rates. Uh, they've gotten much better. Ours are particularly good. And I say that for one reason. We redesigned the lock in 2008-2009 to be a motor lock. Every single one of our locks are motor designs. We uh, cycle test every single lock that man we manufacture, every single one. 2,000 times before it ships. Each lock is designed for 200,000 cycles. So you're getting a lock that you know is going to work and we know is going to work. As a result, our reliability has been second to none. Um, we have a 99.7% um, quality management rating. What that means is if we send 1,000 locks out to the field, we might have an issue with three of them. That's significantly 10, 20, 30 times better than any other safe lock manufacturer that I'm aware of. So it is um, a very good quality management program, and um, you can have confidence that uh, your lock will give you years of good service. All right, so the next webinar that we're going to cover is um, ProLogic L02. It'll be in a different session. Um, you can learn all about the ProLogic L02 little bit about what we're going to learn. ProLogic L02 is our entry-level commercial lock. It has a number of features, 30 user codes, dual control, time delay. It controls up to four locks. This uh, series, we will cover um, how to convert it from an analog signal to a digital, doing that reset method we told you, how to pair it with the lock so it downloads the programming to the lock, and how to um, enroll new users, change user codes, uh, set it in single control or dual control, program time delay, set up multiple locks. Because it has an LCD screen, this is simple. You just follow the prompts on the screen. And we'll also cover troubleshooting. So that's in our next webinar series. All right, I've taken up a good amount of your time. Thank you very much for listening. Um, we are very appreciative of the support we have in the marketplace. And uh, if you need further information or technical support, don't hesitate to call us. We are open, uh, we're in the West Coast, so we're open from 8.30 a.m. till 5 p.m. Give us a call at this number. Ask for tech support. If you want the lead tech, his name is Roy Morris. He's very good. He'll, uh, he knows the product very well, and he will help you out. If you would prefer to email us, email us at techsupport at securemsys.com. If you're looking for me, my name is Jeremy. Uh, email me at jeremybrooks at securemsys.com. I'm happy to answer any of your questions or concerns. I can usually be reached pretty much any time. My cell phone number is 805-616-7928, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for participating in the webinar, and if we can be of service, don't hesitate to call.